It's a little weird. So uh, let me give you a quick recap for those of you who weren't here last week. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what the fuck you kids are all getting a man. No, what, what, what? No, last act. That was the last act, and she looked lovely doing it. You ain't going to get that far with me, kids. Now, so the recap of the last few weeks, I'm going to keep it quick, I'm going to keep it short, and I'm going to keep talk fast, so try to pay attention as I talk quickly, because I'm going to make sure we get everything that I said last week out through my mouth again and into your ear holes, but I only got about a minute. So I'm walking through the woods in North Carolina, and North Carolina has clay mud. Clay mud is the kind of mud that when you get stuck in it, it makes a little vacuum around a part of your body. So when you're stuck in the clay mud, you get really fucking stuck in the clay mud, and then your little buddy Chris, who's only about five foot fucking nothing, and you're six foot, oh my fucking God, tries to fucking help you get out of the mud by holding a stick over the fucking mud. The mud you pull on the stick, and he's like, what the fuck? You're not moving. Duh, I'm not moving. You weigh all of 100 fucking pounds, and I'm 200 goddamn pounds. You can't fucking pull me out of the mud. Go get your fucking dad. Would you get your goddamn dad, please? <laughs> so I sank in the Carolina mud up to about my balls. <laughs> And Chris had run off into the deep distance of the woods to go get some fucking help. And I heard the wolves call out. It's a frightening fucking moment, kids, when you're sitting there stuck in the goddamn mud, not being able to get anywhere, knowing that if the wolves decide to come see what's for dinner, the, you, you know the answer is you. And <laughs> you give it, begin to contemplate exactly how little you've managed to accomplish in only 12 years of being alive. You reflect upon the fact of, oh, really, a virgin? Really? I'm gonna die a virgin. I am not okay with this. So an hour or so goes by. I mean, it feels like an eternity as I sit there in the dark listening for the wolves to come closer. And Chris's dad finally gets there with Chris and one of Chris's dad's buddies. They'd been drinking and watching football or something. So they're good and, you know, like Sunday afternoon drunk. Not shit-faced, <laughs> just Sunday afternoon drunk. And they look at the kid stuck in the mud. Oh, look at the stupid fucking kid stuck in the mud. Oh, this is funny. Oh, my God. Oh, look at the stupid kid stuck in the mud. Would you quit making fun of me and get me out of here? So they begin to dig. And, you know, the mud has about three feet on either side of me from solid ground. So you have to actually climb around in the mud. So the gentleman, drunkenly Sunday afternoon, drunkenly, spend the next hour and a half almost getting stuck. Holy shit, somebody get me out of here. I think, oh, God, thank God. Yeah, um, would, you, would any of you assholes mind calling my father? Because I'm really not feeling all that comfortable or confident in your actions right now. No, Jay, you're going to be okay. So they keep digging and they're trying to get me around here. I've sank up to about my belly button, by the way. And um, <laughs> that's when they go and get my father. My father, guys, this is not for burlesque. It's just fucking hot up here, okay? Relax. So my father arrives. I've now sank up to my man titties. My father looks at me and goes, has anybody called the uh, emergency services yet? No. What the hell? My father runs home, calls 911. Come here, my kid's about to get eaten by the planet. Could you, like, maybe fix this? So my father comes back. He tries to dig me out, but nobody can quite reach me in the middle of the mud pit, and I'm sinking and sinking, et cetera, et cetera. So... Four fire trucks, two ambulances, and eight cop cars later. There are now planks of wood set up over the mud pit so that the EMS and firefighters can work <laughs> trying to dig my ass out of here. We've got floodlights set up because it's, it's, it's now, you know, like 10 or 11 at night. And we, we gotta make sure we can see what we're doing. I've got two arms and a head sticking out of the fucking mud, okay? They look at me, 
Jay, we have one last idea. Sure. Do you want to hear it first? Uh, listen, guys, do you think I'm going to say no right now? <laughs> well, let me at least tell you what the idea is first. Whatever. It's not like I'm going to say no. What we, what we want to do is we want to put a harness on you and put it on the back uh, uh, of the, the fire truck. Um, why, why, why did you tell me this? Because I was really behind the idea until I heard this. I still have to do it, and I don't have an option here, but damn, man! So I put the harness on. <laughs> they, they, they attach the harness to the back of the fire truck thing. All right, Jay, we're going to wedge a couple shovels in here. <laughs> and create an air pocket, which works. Hurts, but it works. All right, give it some gas, Jimmy. <laughs> pop! And I, and I popped out of the mud. Yay! Yay! Now, the pop what was actually apparently my, my, uh, my, my, my ankles, my knees, my hips, and uh, it was just stuff. Stuff. I didn't need to see a chiropractor for years. So they take me to the, to the hospital because they're like, well, kid, you nearly got eaten by the planet. What does that do to a person? Let, come, let us study you. So I let them study me for about an hour, hour and a half, and mom says, We're, you're, you're done studying him. We're taking him home. He's going to bed. He's getting a shower. So I went home, washed the mud off, went to bed, promptly got up the next morning when I had to go to school.